Welcome to another Tableau tutorial video. I'm Weston Palmer. So this is where we left off in part one of the previous video. If you haven't seen it, go back, check it out. That'll help you get to at least this point. Thank you to my Patreon supporters. I appreciate them letting me know that they appreciate what, what I'm putting out here. It means a lot to me. The one thing I did do different is I did add some additional uh, data source, not a data source, I added some additional data. I'm gonna need to go and refresh this data, it's live, so there should be more data points. And the issue is going to be that they're all, a lot of them are going to be overlapping each other, so that when we go to the chart, you can see here, when we go to the chart, nothing's really changed, they're all on top of each other. And what I'd like to get is I'd like to have them move around so they just kind of clump, not on top of each other. And this is going to require a little bit of uh, finessing. And what I'm going to do is we're going to say, we're going to just call this uh, index. We're going to put that formula in there. And this is, uh, okay. We're going to type in if then statement. If index... Let me make, blow this up. And this is called modulus, or modulo. It's divided by 4 equals 0. Then, and what this is saying is if you take the index and you divide it by 4 and the result is 0, then we're going to say um, index divided by 0.5. All right, so it's not letting us, it doesn't want to allow us to do this. So what we'll do is we're going to trick it into thinking that this is a, um, this is a aggregate function, and that should work. So we're going to hit OK, and we're just going to have to bring this back over, impact copy. And it's added things way over off to the side here. Impact. And what we need to do is under, what was that? That's like, that's impact. So if index is five, if index is four divided by four is zero, then we're taking four divided by 0.5. Maybe it's not a decimal in here. Let's see what happens when we do that. So we're trying to get them all in the same place. Okay, so we're getting closer. All right, what I've done is I've added negative, so it's going on both sides of the 0.5, and the number is big enough so that it's just a little bit. You can see that it's kind of moving around. Uh, you don't see that up here. So what I'm going to do is I'll just copy this, and I'm going to copy that to impact, or actually copy it from impact to likelihood. And we're going to be doing something very similar here. And it's get telling us that it doesn't like it because it's a non-aggregate. So we'll just type max. I can't remember what the other one, oh, I think it was average. Average and average. And that should work. We're actually going to change these negatives around a little bit. Um, and the reason you do it is so that you don't end up with a perfectly symmetrical line. It's a little bit more of a grouping. So let's apply it. And we'll have to bring that back over to likelihood. And it didn't raise it up enough. I had to go under editing table calculations. Initially it was going with table across and what we really want is we want to be able to do the numbers at the um, the lowest level. Although it doesn't appear that that's what's happening here. We may want to um, just have an issue at the issue level. 
it's very counterintuitive to me. Okay, so this is what you can see here. There's only one in each of these other spots, and it has one through four here. It's got three at one end, four at the other. And the issue we're going to run into, I know I'm using issues a lot here, is if we change the sign so that it moves around a little bit. And then we'll change this to positive. And so it looks like more of a grouping. What you can do through is if you have a bunch of issues, you can add a similar one for index. For the fifth index, it will go one direction. Uh, changing the signs so that they're not the same will keep it from going in just a straight line one way or the other. This kind of shows us a bunching, bunching up. And so that's how you add the jittering. You, as you saw in the video, there was some uh, trial and error. You want to take the index, you want to take it and convert it into a decimal, because these are all showing as decimal. And you may actually have to come in here and change these, uh, this impact again, because we changed it, at, included a table calculation. But uh, dividing it by, this is the modulus, dividing by 4 if it's 0, so if it's the fourth one, divided by 50, you can and make it a negative number and a negative number. You could change it so that these are different variable amounts, so they spiral out. But it's adding it to this impact, and the reason you do this is so that it's not right up on the line. And then you can clean that up. Just do the same thing on the likelihood, and then you'll have your risk chart with the dots jittered. Hope you found that useful and entertaining. Thanks for watching. I hope you'll subscribe and turn on notifications so you know when new videos are released. Check out some of these other videos I think you'll find helpful.